Mexico's Train Maya is an impressive 1,554 kilometer train route that circles the Yucatan Peninsula. In this series, we take you with us as we explore the entire route. From amazing archeological sites, crystal clear lakes, amazing beaches, colorful colonial towns, magical cenotes, and delicious local foods, we experience it all. We are currently staying in Sakalum in the state of Yucatan. And in last week's video, we took you along as we explored La Ruta Puc. Uh, but in this video, we're gonna show you what else there is to do in the area, including visiting two Pueblo Magicos. And if you stay tuned to the end, we'll give you a tour of our Airbnb, as well as a breakdown of our expenses. Today, we've driven a little over an hour to the archeological zone of Chakmultum. Uh, this archaeological zone is actually the very last one on the Ruta Puk, uh, so we should see some of the same kind of architecture. The word Chakmultun means monuments of red rock, and you can see red rocks all over this place. Yeah, none of the other sites we've been to have this much like pink and red toned uh, stones. Uh, when we came in, the ticket office was completely closed. The gate to the site was open, um, but it did have a sign that said that entrance fee was 75 pesos per person, but there was no one to pay it to. So after about a kilometer walk and a scramble up a, a very steep hill, we are now at building 20, which is the tallest structure here. Uh, this is by far the most adventurous uh, site that we have done on the Ruta de Puc. Um, and of course, the lady did show up to the ticket counter uh, to collect our money, so we did get to pay. Uh, the hike up here was a little bit strenuous, uh, but definitely worth the views. It's beautiful. So we drove about 10 kilometers up the road to the Pueblo Magico of Tikash, which was just added last year. Yeah, they added a ton of Pueblo Magicos last year, and we've generally been kind of uh, exploring the originals. So this is our first new one. Um, in addition to the archeological zone that we just visited, uh, they do have an eco park, and they also have some grutas or some caves that you can do guided tours of. We're not gonna be doing either of those today, but we are gonna go check out their main church and we're gonna try to find the alley of murals because you know we love some street art.
230 minutes up the road to our second Pueblo Mexico of the day, Mani. Uh, our first stop, though, was to get something to eat. So we are currently at the restaurant Coben, uh, which serves traditional Mayan dishes. Uh, we ordered a sampler platter of the um, starters, and then we also got a big order of pakchuk. Our plate of starters has arrived, and here we have a huge variety. These are huevos uh, encimados, uh, which is basically an egg cooked inside of a tortilla. Um, these are little chaya um, tamales. Um, these right here are, all, are polcones, uh, which are little balls of masa that have beans inside. And then here we have the empanaditas de chaya, um, and then these are empanadas de chichara, which is a pork mixture. So we're gonna try them all. Our family size pork chuk has arrived and it is indeed family size. And we also got some handmade tortillas. Wow, so that might have been the best pork chuk we've had in Yucatan. It was super affordable as well, so I definitely recommend coming here. Uh, but now we're going to go check out some of the other things that Mani is known for, in addition to their amazing gastronomy, which we can attest to. Uh, they're known for uh, their ex convento, as well as their uh, handmade clothing and artesanias. And then lastly, there is like a little beekeeping kind of place that you can go see, uh, because this area has these cute little stingless bees. So we may get to check that out in a little bit. So unfortunately the ex convento is closed um, and during uh, the weekend they do some tours uh, but during the week you have to actually email someone to arrange a tour. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and put that contact information here so that way you can do a tour when you come. Uh, the Artesanea Market, unfortunately, is also only open on weekends. So now we have come to the little beekeeping sanctuary uh, and hopefully we can check this out. <laughs> So, en Maya le llamamos jobón o tronco hueco en español. No tienen aguijón. Mm. Cada colmena tiene 3.000 abejas. Oh, wow. Una reina y cuatro machos. Dos veces al año hacemos nuevas casas. Después es, hacemos su tapa de cedro. At the end of the tour, he explained all the different products they make from the honey, pollen, and wax. He bought some honey and made a donation as the tour was completely free. So today we drove an hour and 40 minutes. Google said it was going to take uh, 2 hours 15 minutes to the archaeological zone of Santa Rosa Champac. 
I think the reason that Google was so off is because you do turn off of the highway and go about 30 kilometers down a partially paved and unpaved yeah. road. Uh, the unpaved part's actually smoother. Once yeah. you get to the paved part, there's huge potholes. We had to slow way down, but in the Jeep, wasn't a big deal. Yeah. Uh, the entrance fee was 75 pesos per person, and we're gonna go check it out. Yet again, we have the site entirely to ourselves. Uh, that's actually been the case in almost every site we've been to in this area, except for Ushmal. Yeah, it's been really great. Uh, at this point, we have officially left La Ruta Puc. Uh, so now we are in the area of Chene's style, um, which peaked a little bit earlier than the Puc region. Uh, the architecture is a little different, but the main difference is that in the Puc region, almost every site got their water from a cenote, but here there are no cenotes, so they use chenes or cisterns to gather the rainwater. So as we rounded a corner, uh, we saw a little path up this unexcavated pyramid, and there's no sign that says you can't climb it, so we did it. Uh, on the little uh, map guide that we paid uh, 10 pesos for, it says that this is El Mirador, and I can see why. The views are fantastic. Uh, this structure is 22 meters high, um, and I'm sure it would look amazing if they got it restored. The first inhabitants of the site were around 350 BC and it reaches peak around 600 AD when it had about 12,000 inhabitants. Uh, and the building behind us now is a little bit different from the other structures we've seen in the Maya area. Um, it is kind of a pyramid, but it's actually more of a building. It had 44 rooms inside. Uh, normally the pyramids just have like a little tunnel and a couple of rooms. Uh, the other difference is uh, the pyramids that we've seen along the way were generally built in stages, sometimes over the course of four or 500 years, where this one was built all in one go. Behind us is the building of the Mouth of the Serpent. We saw another one of these at Chicana near Kalak Mool. I know, but the one that we saw there at Chicana, I thought actually looked like a Mouth of a Serpent. Yeah. When I look at this one, all I see is one of the Martians from the Muppets. <laughs> So 
This morning, our first uh, stop was to attempt to visit the archaeological zone of Mayapan. Uh, we had heard that it was closed, but then we saw on Google that there were two new five-star reviews in the past three days. Uh, but unfortunately, we drove out there. The locals still had the road blocked. They're apparently in a dispute with the INAH trying to get more money uh, or a bigger percentage of money from the ticket sales. So unfortunately, we were not able to visit what is called the little mini Chichen Itza. Uh, instead, we are currently on the Ruta de los Conventos, and we are in the town of Mama. Our second stop on the Ruta de Ex Conventos is Chumayel. Um, we were actually just recently made aware of this Ruta de Ex Conventos. Um, one of our subscribers, William Woods, mentioned it. And then also when we were in the Pueblo Magico of Mani the other day, it is part of that Ruta. Strip another 10 minutes down the road to our third stop of Teabo. Uh, the whole reason that this like Ruta de Conventos exists is because when the Catholic Spaniards arrived here, they wanted to convert as many Mayans as possible. So anywhere where there was a decent sized city, they built one of these. This town was particularly beautiful and we enjoyed admiring the many murals they had honoring the elders of the community. We have another 30 minutes down the road to visit this little pueblo of Ushkutskab. Uh, this pueblo is known as the Garden of the Yucatan. So we are going to take our picture in front of those letters, check out their church, and then we're going to try to head to the market and see if we can get some unique fruits. Thank you. 
So we're back in Mani, and we just finished up our delicious lunch at Coben. Uh, that restaurant, yet again, very delicious. Uh, since it is a weekend, it does look like the uh, Artesanea stalls are all set up, so we're gonna go check those out, and then hopefully we'll be able to go in that main church. Today we got up and drove an hour and 40 minutes to the archaeological zone of Khan Ki. Uh, this archaeological zone is actually a little bit closer to Campeche, but since we had a few more days in Sakalom and not that much more to do, <laughs> we decided to come on out here. Uh, entrance was free because it is a Sunday, uh, and this site is definitely not visited very often when we signed in to the little registration book. Um, the last group that was here was here two days ago. It was just two people, and then before that it was three days before, and there was just two people. So uh, definitely a kind of off-the-beaten-track site, so we're going to check it out. So the Mayan word Kanki means yellow henequen. Uh, and this site is mostly unexcavated, un renovated, unreconstructed. Uh, so you see a ton of just huge piles of rocks and every once in a while you see like an arch or a doorway kind of poking out. It is, it is pretty cool. It has a very like adventure feel. This site was inhabited from 400 to 900 AD. Uh, but most of the structures were built in the 600s. So we drove down the road another half hour towards Merida to the archaeological zone Esh Kalam Keen. Uh, this zone was also free because again it is Sunday. Uh, it does look like they are building a gigantic uh, welcome center yeah. and it also appears that we are the only ones here. So we're going to go climb up this hill and check it out.
So we now made it to the top of the first structure. Uh, the views up here are fantastic, and you can actually see a few arches and windows, even though the structure isn't completely uh, redone. Uh, the site name actually means window through which the sun enters. Along with the construction on the new visitor center in the front, uh, you can see back here that they are reconstructing a lot of the buildings back here as well. Yeah, if you look right here, you'll see that there are a bunch of numbered uh, blocks. So they've laid out all of the stones and then numbered them where they should go. And now they're systematically putting the buildings back together. This was our Airbnb for the past 12 nights here in Sakalum. So you can see it is a hotel and we did get shared use of that beautiful pool there. Uh, they have really great landscaping. And we actually had a whole house. So you come through the main door here and here is the kitchen. And there is the living room with couch and TV dining space. Now there is no AC downstairs. And then here we have full bath. We head upstairs. It's a little dusty now because we had all the windows open. <laughs> this is the bedroom we use to work out and that we charged everything and you can see it does have an AC unit. This was the bedroom we slept in. You can see it has a big king size bed. Got some closet space, drawers. I even had a place to do my makeup and a very powerful AC unit. Now this should have been a third bedroom but it was locked off. And then here is the second full bath. So overall, we enjoyed our stay. It was a great location. That Airbnb set us back $851 for 12 nights. We spent $298 on transportation, $128 on entertainment, just $71 on bars and alcohol, $421 at restaurants, just $46 on groceries. We did bring some stuff with us from Merida. We spent $24 on utilities. That was two Telcel recharges and just $36 on personal care. That brings our grand total to $1,875 or just $156 per day. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them down below. If you haven't already, check out last week's video where we explore all of the Ruta book.